Well, hello there. We're going to get uh, an update on GPTEL, which is the uh, Emacs package that allows you to work with any language model and, and fit it into your workflow. What we're going to do today is deal with some more advanced uses, uh, a little bit uh, beyond the simple chat interface in Markdown or org mode that you would usually do, or I would assume most people usually do and uh, talk about some of the other amazing things that let you fit it into whatever workflow you're, you do in Emacs. So uh, to start, I'm going to go uh, to the repository where GPTEL uh, resides here, Cartink GPTEL. And um, this began just a few short months ago as an interface to OpenAI's uh, GPT models, so GPT-3 and then later GPT-4. And as you can see, in a, sh a few short months, the extremely active maintainer and a very active community have added all sorts of things. Now, for myself, uh, I am currently using OpenAI, so I, uh, with, uh, with all the GPT-3 and 4 models. Uh, I'm using Olama, which is one way, along with GPT-4 all and uh, possibly other uh, things, to host your own open source models. So I can download uh, any kinds of open source models and run them on the one machine I have that has a dedicated uh, GPU in it and, um, and make use of that. So Olama provides both a command line and an API that gets served up uh, on your own machine. I also use Gemini and Together AI. For, for the large open source models, I have to download a quantized version, which is not the full floating point uh, method because of the limitations of my single GPU card. Theoretically, with 16 gigabytes, uh, so if the download of the model is 16 gigabytes, theoretically I could run it uh, on my RTX 4080, but in practice, if it's anything bigger than 12 gigabytes, there's, uh, there's additional um, room for inference uh, that needs to be uh, taken in caching. So realistically speaking, 12 gigabytes would be the largest that I could do. However, if I wanna use something bigger, like uh, you know the new uh, Llama 3 not uh, quantized and, uh, and with uh, however many, you know, hundreds of billions of parameters it has, then I can use someone that hosts it, uh, that's uh, uh, some of these uh, providers are hosts. Together AI, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's extremely inexpensive for uh, and hosts a, a huge number of really good models at all uh, types of scale. So this is not a, not a paid promotion, just uh, I love this service. Uh, and then I also use Anthropic, the new Anthropic 3 Claude model, the Claude 3 Opus, I should say, the, large of the, the largest of the three models. About as close to talking to a human being as we have gotten so far, uh, it's pretty amazing. So I, uh, I have an API key for Anthropic as well. Okay. Now, that said, most people will probably uh, get, in, get into using this by simply uh, uh, executing MetaX GPTEL. In fact, let's do that. Even though we're going to go uh, outside the general chat buffer, I want to show this uh, and a couple, at least one tweak that you might want to make to it. So gptel is the command. It will open a buffer that originally was always called chat gpt. Now it's called something related to whatever your default model is for using gptel. So right now uh, it set me to olama and uh, allows me to uh, uh, you know, to ask a question. So, uh, I, you know, the typical uh, test question is, why is the sky blue, <laughs> let's say. And uh, before I hit return, uh, or before I send this, I can uh, hit 
the magical command GPTEL send. That's really where all the magic comes even outside of one of these chat buffers. So uh, in the chat buffer, I can say control U, control C, return to, to, uh, to get that GPTEL send um, interface up. Or I could just say control U, meta X, GPTEL send. And we see a number of things that can be set here, like the system message or the directive, and I have a, a wide variety of them. Actually, the reason that this is, it's going to probably respond in Spanish if I, if I leave this uh, system prompt the way it is. So I'll just say, um, I'll do a, a, a default message that you're a helpful assistant. Uh, system prompts, by the way, for some of these very large models are no longer as important as they used to be because you can simply paste an entire document and some background on what you're looking for uh, as the main thing without a specific system prompt, and they do great with that. Sending this to uh, GPT model Llama 3 is what I'm sending it to when I... Uh, uh, select dash M, I can choose any of the back ends that I use. So my Anthropic models, my Olama models that I host on my own machine, um, OpenAI, if I say ChatGPT, or any of the ones that I use with the Together AI service uh, as examples. So uh, we'll be fine with this and we'll just send it. And then uh, sometimes when you use that interface, you're, it doesn't show that it's actually doing it. But that very quick response came from Llama 3 hosted on my own machine. <laughs> I'm so impressed with this. So it tells me why the sky is blue or appears blue. Uh, and an example of how you could demonstrate this using Emacs Lisp. <laughs> why? Because my system prompt says, you are a helpful assistant living or dwelling within Emacs, believe it or not. So therefore, it got very proactive and sent me some code <laughs> that will indicate. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and run this code. I am in org mode after all, so let's run it. And the result is the sky appears blue because of relay scattered, <laughs> scattering. Oh, that's really great. Okay, and then uh, one thing that you'll see is the response came as... Uh, with the string assistance, assistant, and then in parens, uh, the back end, which is Olama, and the model, which is this quantized version of Llama 3, uh, 8 billion parameters. Uh, the way, the reason that's important is because you can take the same thing, you could select any part of any buffer, and you can say, GPTEL send, I'm doing GP, uh, control U, GPTEL send, and change the model. So that way you would be asking the very same question of a different model. So let's ask the same uh, model of, uh, same question of something else, like uh, GPT 3.5. Let's ask that, and we'll wait for it, and then that answer comes through here, and ChatGPT 3.5 was not uh, was not as proactive in uh, doing something uh, in Emacs, or it correctly assumed that although it dwells in Emacs, it doesn't have to always give me Emacs things. <laughs> so anyway, this attribution is very useful because you can have uh, kind of a dialogue between three or four models actually uh, that uh, you choose either the entire conversation that you're sending so that they have context, or you uh, uh, just uh, select uh, certain areas to send. Uh, so that's very useful and not something that everyone makes, uh, makes, uh, takes advantage of. So if I look at my code in Emacs Lisp to set this up, uh, there is my supplements for functions to use in, uh, uh, in hooks. And this is a simple function to return the uh, the uh, back end of the model after uh, making sure that those symbols are actually bound and thus GP, you know, you can uh, infer that GPTEL has actually been loaded and is active because I, I carefully check if GPTEL, 
GP tail back end is bound and then just blow right past and assume that it's uh, assigned and in the correct format uh, with an AREF. So uh, anyway, that's where we'll start. Now, where we'll go next though is um, a couple things. One is when you do GP tail send with a control U and you get this whole thing, you've got various parameters that you can set. So these are some of the parameters. You can, of course, as we've seen, hit, hit dash M and change the model to any of the models that you utilize and have configured. Uh, you can additionally say that uh, you want to send all of the current buffers previ previous responses or some subset of them, although I would never do that. I would just select it with, uh, you know, keyboard or mouse and then uh, that's what send sent and you could say instead of uh, sending the response to the buffer I'm in, you could send it to the mini buffer instead. Just hitting M will light that up uh, or toggle it. Uh, you could send it to the kill ring so you, you can paste it in, uh, into some document that you might want to uh, use. You can respond in place wherever your cursor or uh, selection is, uh, etc., etc. One thing I'm not seeing is the ability to set temperature. That's a, a pretty important uh, parameter for a lot of models, which basically tells them to be very uh, kind of deterministic or staid in their response versus creative and, uh, uh, you know, uh, less deterministic. So uh, I don't see that. However, I know it's possible to do. And what I uh, am going to point you to is there's a variable called GPTEL expert commands that is currently set to nil uh, uh, or false. So if I were to toggle that, and this is not a customizable variable, it, it doesn't use the customized interface that is. So uh, you would just set it in your initialization code. Uh, I'm going to toggle it right here and do control U meta X GPTEL send again. Ah, and this time I have a dash T to set temperature. So uh, not surprisingly, it's, it's set to the middle of the road, temperature of one. And uh, not all models will pay attention to that parameter, but most do. Uh, most kind of follow the example of OpenAI uh, in that regard. And then additionally, I can say inspect the query or uh, in either a list format or JSON format uh, so that I can understand exactly what will be sent to the model with my current setup. So doing the dry run, uh, I'll hit J for JSON. Uh, I'll hit uppercase J for JSON. Uh, then just for funny, I'll, funds, I'll change this. So, uh, this is basically what is being sent in curl. Uh, so you've got model, you've got messages, it has my system prompt, and uh, basically because I was in this, uh, uh, had my, uh, my point in, the, in a helpful buffer, uh, it's going to send some portion of that buffer. Uh, streaming is set to false and temperature is set to 1.0. So, so when you set expert, you get, quote, experimental uh, features of GPTEL send. Uh, and in that case, uh, that means you can set temperature and you can do a couple of other things that are, that are in addition. So we'll leave that set and then move on. So the next thing I want to show is um, something about reading. Like uh, I've been doing a lot of reading and studying uh, so, based on that workflow, I want to show what that looks like. Um, I'm going to start with an EPUB and make an important point about an important thing. Currently reading uh, Three Body Theory by Lu Shishin, and um, uh, one of the most beautiful things you'll see that you hardly ever see when you buy an ebook from this publisher, you will see the message, there is no DRM on, uh, placed on this uh, book, on this ebook, by 
request of the publisher. Please support publishers that do that. Uh, I was really surprised with such an immensely popular uh, book series from such a known author that this publisher does, does not put uh, DRM on the books. So what they do instead, and please notice that, that Emacs can, re can read EPUB books, <laughs> in case you didn't know that. Um, uh, in fact, let me go to one that I don't have open. So The Dark Forest is what I'm, the second book is what I'm reading it right now. The first book I don't have open at the moment. I'll open it in Emacs, and you get what an EPUB looks like. But then you can start NOV mode, NOV dash mode, which is on ELPA and other places, and boom, you have it. So where you you can uh, navigate the book, um, uh, as there are certain things that that are just very Emacsy. If I hit L, I'll go back to where I have been before. So that's like the info um, system in Emacs, and um, and it's a very nice thing. So uh, why why does it matter? Well. Uh, having a book with, without DRM on it matters because guess what? This reader is go and other readers are going to allow me to copy and paste the text, <laughs> which is great. Most uh, uh, DRM books, uh, the, you go into the proprietary reader and it says, oh, this has DRM. You're not allowed to copy and paste. Like if you want to look something up in Google, you're going to just have to type the text. Um, just like you would with the paperback book, af after all, isn't that true? You would have to just type it out. Uh, so you are not allowed to do anything that you can't do with a uh, paper book, basically, other than carrying it around, uh, carrying around several thousand books in a, in a tiny uh, form factor. But, uh, so anyway, that's all very fun. Let's go back to the dark forest and take a look at what we can do with GPTEL. So I'm reading the three-body uh, problem series, the second book called The Dark Forest, and I'm in a particular uh, chapter early on in the book, and I'm looking for a footnote. Uh, oh, here's, okay, so here's one. So in uh, the Emacs uh, lovely uh, reader, I click on the foot, uh, footnote, and it tells me that Juan Chabau, uh, what uh, was an influential novelist, SAS, blah, 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 who became enormously popular after his untimely death. He only lived to be about 45, it appears. Uh, okay, so that's something. But what if I want to know more about it? Let me grab this uh, text and do Control U, Meta X, GP, tell, send, and send it over to Olama 3 just because. Uh, I can, and it's hosted on my own machine, and I'm just kind of blown away that this works. So let's do that. Now, the ebook is a locked buffer, so it's uh, read only. Uh, oh, that's very funny. It, it responded in Spanish, probably because I still have a system prompt set somewhere in, in Spanish to be my Spanish language conversational partner as I uh, in, improve my. Uh, uh, as I improve my Spanish. So this says, so are you referring to Wang Xiaobo? Oh, how interesting. 1963 to 1907, so I think that is a different, so this gives me different dates. So now I could go on a, a little search to find out, uh, you know, uh, which, which of these dates w is correct. Uh, he was a writer and essayist, a Chinese uh, uh, essayist and writer, known for his works uh, about the uh, contemporary uh, Chinese culture. Uh, although he was not a mathematician in the strict sense of the word, of the term, he did study mathematics in university. He was considered one of the most, uh, m most influential writers in China and of the, de of the 1990s decade. So anyway, as you can see, you can do this kind of thing uh, you can do this kind of thing at will, uh, even though your normal e-reader uh, or whatever you're using in your workflow doesn't have any kind of connections to uh, large language models and, and AI. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to point out. 
Now, something in a similar vein, let's say, was something that I was uh, studying the other day related to actually um, language learning. So I was looking at uh, something uh, in uh, a browser. Now, why would I ever use the EW, EWW built-in Emacs browser? Well, specifically if I want to, uh, if I'm in a studying mode and looking to uh, be able to copy and paste again and send things out. So for instance, like uh, looking through some of uh, Don Quixote's uh, famous phrases, So, más vale la pena en el rostro, en la face, que la mancha en el corazón. So, let's say I want to take la mancha, and uh, I can send it to Google Translate from Emacs. Well, you can do that usually in, uh, uh, in uh, any re reader as well. Or let's just send the word mancha itself, because I like it just sending a single word by itself to Google Translate because it returns with a lot of synonyms and multiple uses and in the original plus the target language, which is very interesting. So it gives you ex uh, po uh, possible examples. However, this says it it's better to to go to the trouble of the face, then the stain, have a stain in the heart or something like that. So I don't really understand that very well. Uh, I don't get it. So how about I ask a lar large language model? And again, I can uh, just select this phrase and say MetaX GPTEL send. And you know what? I'm sending this one to uh, Plot 3 Opus. And I'm going to change the directive too. I'm going to say quantume uh, de esta frase. Or even Explica me, because I want it to answer me in Spanish. So e explain to me this phrase, uh, uh, sus, um, let's say, significados, its meanings, y sus usos, o y su fuente, let's say, and its source, uh, to see what uh, Claude 3 Opus will tell us about it. Uh, and this gives a lot more possible context than any simple lookup. Uh, so that's one of the one of the reasons I really really uh, love doing that. And because I sent it off to uh, Cloud Three Opus, I can expect that it's going to take some uh, some significant time uh, for it to return. <laughs> but here we go. Uh, so again, notice that in my, even though this is a buffer that's not a chat buffer, I still have my attribution, which I'm uh, putting in by means of a hook. Uh, so, for, so no matter how I'm interacting with things, I can tell what, sort, what uh, backend and model it came from. So the first one was from uh, my self-hosted Llama 3, and this uh, next one here is from Anthropic, uh, Anthropic servers. Uh, their Cloud 3 Opus model. So it says this phrase is a saying or popular refrain in Spanish. Let's analyze its meaning and possible origin. Its literal significance or meaning is oh, en el rostro que un mancha a figurative sense in the corazón. So it's better to have the trouble uh, or sad or reflected sadness in the face than to have a stain in the heart. Okay, I think I. Uh, now what is wrong about is that 
it's it's uh, its exact origin is difficult to determine. That's not true at all. It should really know that this is from Don Quixote. Let's say if I were to take that same thing and uh, send it again to uh, to. Let's name the source. And let's just do that. And this time let's send it to, um, to GPT-4. See how that, uh, that one works out. This time I told it what the source was. Uh, and that, therefore, it will know that it uh, that it's uh, from Cervantes uh, Don Quixote. ChatGPT four Turbo. It's a proverb that is encountered in Don Quixote de la Mancha de Miguel de Cervantes. This work, published in two parts, is one of the most important in the uh, world in Spanish literature and has been translated to practically every language. Yeah, okay. Uh, this one encapsulates various of the recurrent themes in that work, such as the importance of virtue, integrity, and sincerity. So it's preferable to be transparent and honest over our faults and lacks and feel the consequences of our errors in, uh, instead of hiding our sins and living with the blame, guilt, corruption, and internal corruption. It reflects the, the value of honesty and integrity. Okay, uh, GPTEL send can, can interact with any uh, types of uh, uh, LLMs, any combination of them, and then even in the buffer that it creates, I could easily take this and turn it into an uh, overall chat uh, simply by sending the context of uh, what's occurred so far. Uh, so uh, very useful. And uh, let me just make sure that I have uh, that I have followed up with everything I wanted to follow up with. And I would say, yes, I have. So I will uh, include links both to uh, and references to both the uh, EPUB reading and Google Translate uh, uh, packages, but most importantly to customization code that will allow you to uh, include attribution uh, and the setting of that expert uh, variable so that you can uh, have access to previews and temperature and whatever else might become uh, experimental features in upcoming GPTEL. So, hope you find that useful and we'll see you in the next one.